Hey, hey, Battle Bay, this is Porthos, and I am here with three videos from Bitter Steel. He is going to teach us how to get into Nightmare League, even if you aren't stocking up on gold weapons like the zombie apocalypse is coming. Bitter Steel is one of my very favorite shooters, and he's my favorite because he plays smart. Look at the setup he's rocking. He doesn't have golden weapons. He's not even rocking epic tier 5 weapons. He's got tier 4 and tier 5 everyday common rare weapons see totally unlike the other guy on his team and totally unlike some of the other guys he's facing off against and yet here he is in nightmare league competing with the very best so really by watching how he plays and what he does we can learn a lot from how to get into nightmare league even if you don't happen to have the thousand of dollars needed to get an all gold setup so the first thing you might notice about how he's playing is he's not just wasting shots He's not just shooting blindly and hoping for dumb luck. He's picking his target and he's using his shots wisely. The thing about Bitter Steel is he can see two steps ahead when he plays. He doesn't get tunnel vision. He sees who needs help, where he needs to be, and when he needs to go there. He sees Black Lotus coming around the corner here, drops a big Bertha for him right when Black Lotus sails into it, and Black Lotus just keeps sailing right into the trap that Bitter Steel was ready for because he was seeing ahead in the battle. The other thing that he's really, really good at is battlefield sense. He uses that radar up at the top and he uses his eyesight to always be checking where the other team is and who is trying to flank. And look at that, Dark Knight drops like a rock because he knew from the map and from watching just where that speeder was going to be. Locking target on LR-10 and two shots later, he is going to meet his maker and there goes 14 BIS-2 dropping some pain on him. All that is left is American Marauder. Pretty much the exact opposite kind of player than Bitter Steel. Bitter Steel has all rare weapons. American Marauder has pretty much all epic and legendary weapons. But look at how this battle just went down. A little bit of smart play and some battlefield sense in just the right time. And like that, American Marauder and all of the unfriends have sunk. Bitter Steel with his trademark triple negative response at the end. He got 14,000 damage. The next highest damage on the other team was 9,000. So did you know you could do that with all rare weapons? Well you can if you play smart like Bitter Steel and that's what it takes to get into Nightmare League. So here is another battle we can watch him play. He's playing with Jaguar and a Fixer. The other team has some shooters and speeder and an enforcer, but they have no Fixer. So Bitter Steel says stay together and Jaguar agrees. If they stay together with this Fixer, they can win because they can just peck away at the other team while the Fixer keeps them alive. But the key is sticking together. Bitter Steel is very good at communicating with his team. He just said together again and waited for the Fixer to agree with him to say, hey, yep, I'm with you, buddy. Finally, the Fixer agreed and signaled that he understands the strategy and what to do. So by communicating with your team, you can really help focus your teammates. Now, that doesn't mean spamming the together button or spamming the attack button, because that's not saying anything, but by specific and useful commands when they need to be said, well, you can really make a difference in helping the team stay on the same page. That way you're all not just running around randomly, shooting and getting tunnel vision while the rest of your team is getting destroyed. So here, oh no, what has happened? Look at this, Jaguar has gone out on his own. He did not follow his own advice and he just died. See, another key to being a good player is not getting tunnel vision, not just being on a speeder, spamming that overboost and then ending up in the middle of a whole lot of unfriends with no backup whatsoever. You see how Bitter still uses cover wisely. He knows situationally when it's time to go out and attack and when it's time to shoot from behind cover. And when you have a fixer on your team and there's no fixer on the other team, well, that's the time to use cover and force them to come to you rather than separating because you're just weakening yourself massively. Bitter Steel knows exactly which weapon to use and where to do it. He led his shot just a slight bit there on Imes and landed a railgun shot from really far away for 100% damage. Imes is going down in a second here, it looks like. But what's going on here? See, he sees, thanks to his map awareness, that they're trying to flank him. They're trying to come in from the other direction. So he's getting ready. Hey, destroy Kappa Kappa. They are focusing their fire. He saw Orange Fighters call and he is making the hit and Kappa Kappa is about to sink. There he goes. 
All right, now at this point they need to regroup and get some defense to go hide in that tunnel as a group so that the three of them can heal back up and take out the remaining four guys. But it doesn't look like Orange 2 Fighter is going to be able to make it. He's trying, but oh shoot, he hit a mine. Well, that might have taken him right out of the fight. Bitter Steel says negative. He sees everything that's going on. After Jaguar Kamikaze, they really kind of just lost their oomph. They lost the firepower advantage and, and lost their advantage as a team. So now it's really just playing catch up and hoping for some luck. CJ is coming out separating himself and let's see what he's gonna do. He drops a grenade right on him. Unfortunately it doesn't break the shield but there goes Orange 2 Fighter. Bitter Steel says nope I'm gonna lay this Big Bertha here and force you to stay out for a few seconds but man look at him. He's got four versus one now, but they're afraid to come in because he is really good with using those weapons. And look at that, do 1500 damage on CJ, and he's going to use a Big Bertha right there so that even if nothing else happens, splash damage will take him out. Bitter Seal says, together, together, negative. They weren't sticking together with the team, and he is unhappy with their play there. And I don't blame him because the team did not stick together like they should. There's just Imes and Snow White asleep, but look, he's gonna drop a big Bertha, follow it up with a missile launcher, there it goes, and Imes faces some serious pain. He's using his weapons really well right here, Bitter Steel, given as good as he's getting, even better. But it's just probably not gonna be enough. Snow White has almost full health, and let's see, she's gonna hit him right up, there it goes. Right now, she hit him with a missile launcher from over the wave. So sometimes, no matter how good you play, two stars on a defeat, your team just doesn't meld well together. Some people choke under stress, make a mistake, and the game is lost. But look at how Bitter Steel used his weapons wisely, didn't just waste shots shooting blindly. He knows exactly which weapon to use and which situation to use it in. So we've got the third battle today. He is facing off against Black Lotus, Oops, Shoulda Run, and some other guys, but on his team is Coffee and Orpheus, two speeders. So in this situation, he needs to play support. These two speeders are probably gonna be rushing off doing a lot of kills, so Bitter Steel needs to stay back, and he knows this, and do some damage from far away. He is really good at using cover and using the map to his advantage. You see, he knows if he goes around that corner, he'll be caught in the crosshairs of three ships and that is not what you want. So instead he's going to shoot from behind cover and try and get some damage on that really powerful shooter right around the corner. And look at that. Coffee just took the hit on his shield, blocking that firebomb for the whole team, saving his buddies a couple thousand damage. That's what you should do as a speeder when you're playing support. There's Orpheus out there, two on one. Black Lotus is gonna go down, and Bitter Steel saw that, so he's rushing to support Orpheus and that other speeder so that the favor is in their side with firepower. Black Lotus, now he is in a bit of a pickle, it looks like. Here he's stunned, but instead of taking the shot and knocking the stun off him, Bitter Steel is waiting for that stun to wear off so his weapons can cool down. Very, very smart, and Black Lotus is about to sink with two speeders on him. You see how Bittersteel is always scanning the horizon to see where he can be most useful and who he should target next. They both agreed, Bittersteel and Orpheus, we should target DX3. DX3 is running around the corner trying to get away and Orpheus is taking him down. Bittersteel knows that, so he's going after some other guys because that little speeder don't stand a chance. Oh, just missed that sniper shot, it looks like. So now who is left? We've got Oops Shoulda Run, as well as two of the three other players, but they're not gonna stand a chance against a speeder because Orpheus just took out DX3 like he promised to do earlier. Meanwhile, using that Iceberg as cover, he is draining some pain down on those other two players. Ober Commando is coming around the corner. Bitter still says, hey, help me out, and Coffee heard the call for help. Two on one, they drop him in seconds. Now, quickly, Bitter Steel picks a new target and destroys Oop Shoulda Run. Only this guy with the Spanish name is left, and look at him. He has given up. He's thrown in the towel. He has raised the white flag, and they are just watching him now. Coffee drops a mine right on top of him. Oh, and look, he moves. He doesn't want to die by a mine, the indignity of it. So instead, they're just going to rain pain on him, and there he goes, sinking to the bottom of the bay. Bitter Steel with his... Trademark triple negative and three stars 
for the win. Look at him, all rare weapons. And he got three times the damage of Black Lotus and Oop Shoulda Run who are rocking legendary and epic tier five weapons. It doesn't take thousands of dollars to win at this game to get to Nightmare League. It just takes a little bit of smarts and knowing how to play with your team. So there you go. This is how to get into Nightmare League Battle Bay with Porthos.